The subject this morning is an important one. It's important for you and I, and it's important for all of us, and that is the title of the, the message today is Unattached and Free. It's only when you know, in the Bible it says they came to know each other. The word know means to experience. Adam and his wife came to know each other, experience each other. So we all want to know what love is. And when we know what love is, and when we think it and we feel it, we are unattached in life to results and outcome. And we are so powerful, we are just totally who we are, and life just works. So that's the principle today is unattachment. In the first Corinthians, chapter 9, the writer says this, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit of God, so that we might know, which means to experience, the things that have been freely given to us by God. Now, freedom is really when, like when I'm speaking, if I'm attached to the outcome, if I'm hoping you get it, if I'm all mixed up in my mind, and I, I'm, I'm thinking all about you, I'm doing rigid thinking, and it's painful, and I get scattered. But if I'm totally participating in what I'm doing with no attachment to the outcome, I am free and I am happy. Anytime you've been free and happy, you have been totally participating with no attachment to, to the outcome. Things that are freely given to us. No attachment to the outcome. I heard about a woman, and she decided to be unattached to mediocrity, and she wanted something new and exciting in her life. We all love new and exciting things, and she decided to go back to college at 40 years old, and she went to college the first day, took her first classes, and. She came back and she was depressed looking and her husband said, what's the matter, sweetie? She said, oh, I can't believe it. I'm the oldest one in the class. Even the teacher is younger than me. That's, that's awful. And he looked at her kind of positively and said, yeah, but you know what? Think about it. You know, here I am dating a, a college girl again. I thought I was over at that years ago. You know, he was dating a college girl, dating his wife now. I want to read something to you here. This is great. There are two, in the first place, there are two kinds of thinking. There's rigid thinking. Now that's, that's a, Edgar Tolley said, rigid thinking comes from being here, but wanting to be somewhere else. Being here, not being present in the moment. We lose our lives when we get in the habit of wanting to be somewhere else. Somewhere else, more bigger, better. Not happy now, but when something else happens. And if I'm happy when something else happens, I'm not happy right now. If I'm happy now, and powerful now, and loving now, something good, good is going to happen for sure. There are two kinds of things, like adaptable, flexible thinking, and rigid thinking. And rigid thinking always causes pain and suffering. It's not good for us. Now, Ernest Holmes put it this way. Divine guidance is yours for the asking. It is not enough merely to know that divine guidance exists. You must use it. You must accept it, and you must use it. Now, seeking outside validation always causes inner frustration. And it always causes us to be living in attachment because we don't feel free. Ernest goes on to say, he wrote this, there is a divine awareness within you right now that will lead you onward and upward. Courage is onward and upward motion as you're going towards what you want. Now, when you have courage, please hear me, this is important, when you have courage, it detaches you from fear. Courage trumps fear all the time. It detaches you from it. The energy turns into magnificent power. Absolutely. Lao Tzu, the mystic, wrote some beautiful things, a Persian poet. He said this, if you can correct your mind, the rest of your life will fall into place. If you can correct your mind, 
the rest of your life will fall into, into, uh, into place. You know, overthinking is one of the things that gets us in trouble and creates suffering, creates anxiety, creates scatteredness, and creates confusion. And when you're confused, you can't get clear answers. And confusion is simply the uh, decision not to make any decisions. Once you make a decision, confusion goes. So this is about making a decision for life. I love Meredith Vieira. She's an amazing person. I like to see you know who she is, a news broadcaster. She's just amazing. Her story is really amazing. How she got on the map. Here, and we all want to be on the map. We want to do some good and 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 have ourselves be out there doing something wonderful. Meredith, she was kind of a anchor kind of broadcaster in New York and she was doing the news and she went one Thursday to get her hair done and she wanted it to look really, really nice and the hairdresser overprocessed it and her hair broke off and became awful looking. Short spaces out of it, awful looking. So she decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put my best self out there. I'm, not, I'm going to participate. So she bought herself a real neat hat and put it on and did her part of the broadcast. And she did this for a week, and her boss came up and told her, you know, Merida, we really don't need you here anymore. And he demoted her to Chicago. Demotion in, in, in uh, her, her place she had, demotion in money in every way. And she was absolutely beside herself, but she made a decision not to be attached she said, you know, I'm going to make my life the best I can be. And so she decided to get the most brilliant hat she could get. And she started wearing them in Chicago. And she started, they, they put her out on the field, out, not in the, in the theater, in the, the studio anymore, but out on the field. She'd wear these hats. I don't know if you remember, sun, rain, storms, and, and you know, she'd go, and she'd be holding these hats. Now, her hats made her famous. Her hats, and people were buying, like, you know, I want a hat like Meredith Vieira, and she was so incredible. And Dan Rather just thought she was great, so Dan Rather put her, put her to work with him and said, here's Meredith and her hats. And she said, it was putting that hat on my head and going almost bald that made my life. The, the, the pain in her life would lead to pleasure if we listen to the, the message. Now, there's no greater feeling than love. That is the greatest feeling there is. And there's no more self-punishment and torment than being jealous and comparing yourselves with other people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Aristotle said, true happiness flows from the possession of wisdom and virtue and not the possession of eternal, on eternal goods. Competition and jealousy separates us from our power. It separates us from ourselves. And when we separate from ourselves, we will always separate from other people. When we are one with the love in ourselves, we're one with the love of people. We're not worried about being rejected and we're totally present for people in our life. Ernest said this in a talk. He said, free yourself from all congested thoughts Selfishness, greed, undue acquisitiveness, and jealousy, all of which have been called the waste products of the mind. I love that. The waste products of the mind. The cause of limitation in our lives is the belief in limitation. And it makes us rigid. It makes us fearful and protective. The, the thought of unlimitation, like there are no limitations, there's opportunities of all, all times, and all times, that's how you find it, by believing in it. There's a wonderful man, and his name is Sri Sri Rabbi Shankar. He's an Indian, Indian, and if you'll put his quote up there, Jim, he's an Indian spiritual teacher, and he's wonderful. Here's what he says. He said, stress is perhaps the deadliest thing we face on the planet. The anxiety that arises when we try to manage our attachments and control uncertainty robs one of their inner peace. Stress is caused 
by having attachment. Jealousy is caused by the belief that you can be replaced. Jealousy is caused by the belief that you can be replaced. You cannot be replaced. You're a one-of-a-kind divine original. And when we think we can be replaced, we act like we can be replaced. Then we start comparing ourselves to other people, and then we start being jealous of other people. And when we start being jealous of other people, the universe will not give you what they have. They earn that by spiritual, emotional thought and action. Absolutely. I had a friend of one time years ago, and she was the last one in the group. Her and her friend were unmarried. All of them, they were all going to, they were all like in bridesmaid or maid of honors and all these. It was all exciting. And here they are, the last two left. And they became very bonded and very, very, very close to each other. And then Betty, the one girl, started dating this man and not hanging around with Sylvia too much anymore. And they were all on their dating. And she started feeling very, very jealous of her best friend. It was okay when they're both suffering together, wanting the same thing, but now she got the thing that they both wanted, and instead of loving her for it and wanting the thing for herself and being happy for her friend, she was totally jealous. And they were, the true story, they were into their relationship for about a year, year and a half, and the marriage started to get some hiccups in it. She married the guy, and she started to get some hiccups. All marriages, all good relationships have hiccups, I call them, and they're time, they're time to grow together and question and tell the truth and start growing and, and, and taking new risks in the relationship. <clears throat> so anyway, she started when she saw that her girlfriend was having trouble with her husband, she started putting little zingers in there. I wouldn't take that from him. I wouldn't do that. I would, I'd tell him to take a walk. And finally, please hear me, because of her rigid thinking and buying into just her friend's rigid thinking called jealousy, she started questioning her marriage, started questioning her husband, and she finally fought for divorce. He was shocked. I mean, they had upset in their marriage, but he was totally shocked. During the divorce, the friend started dating him and then they wound up getting married. You know what? But if you put out poison, you get poison back double twice, right? Absolutely. So they got married, and they just parted friendship. They got married, and then she wound up, she wound up getting divorced from the, you know, you get she married the, her friend's husband. Then after about a year and a half, about the same amount of time, they wound up getting divorced. That's what jealousy will do. You cannot have the thing you're jealous of. If you're jealous of people with a lot of money, you won't have it. If you look at my good looks and say, God, I'll never be as handsome as mine, <laughs> you'll never have it. Absolutely. You've got to be happy where you're at and be the handsome, beautiful you that you are and stop looking at somewhere else. If it's to be found, it's to be found on the inside for sure. Now, with, within you is the unborn possibility of all love, all the abundance, all the health, all the goodness, all the relationships, everything that, that you need to make you happy is right inside of you right now. And it's, it's, like, it's like stepping into the flow of it. Gary Zukov said this, when we dis dismantle the parts of our personalities that have controlled us for so long, such as anger and jealousy and vindictiveness and superiority, or inferiority, or, or inferiority, we own our spiritual power. And that's when life starts working. When we own it, when we, it's already there, but just own it inside of ourselves. Now, the, the only thing, please hear me, I've got control over nothing. I don't have any control over Sheila. God, I'd rather try to fight a mountain lion than try to get I've tried it. I've tried a few zingers now and then, but it doesn't work. The only thing you have control of in your life are your thoughts. You control, you behave upon what you control as far as thoughts, and you change your thoughts, and you change your life, you change 
your behavior. That is God in you, is, is your mind. Ron Woodward put it this way, low self-image is not usually a fact. <laughs> low self-image is not usually a fact, but it's, it's just mi mismanaged memories. Mismanaged memories, I just love it. Now, your memories are chosen by you. You can choose to have happy memories all the time. People who are impactful, loving, happy in life are good at choosing happy memories. You get to choose them all the time. I have this memory of my mother that's great. And when people used to be jealous around her, you know, the, the young girls or sometimes my sister might get into that a little bit. She'd say, jealousy, jealousy, custard. Go stick your head in mustard because that's the way it feels when you're jealous. She was great that way, absolutely. Low self-esteem, low self-image is not usually a fact, but it's based on mismanaged memories. Memories are chosen by you. And how you respond to your memories, because memories like yesterday too, how you respond to your memories or how you respond to the stuff in your subconscious mind and override it with your conscious mind and make today be a really great day. David Seabury wrote a book that changed my life. It's, it, years ago I wrote it. It's called The Art of Selfishness. And it's not being about being comparing superior or inferior to others. It's not about being better. It's not about being jealous. It's not about comparison at all. It's about the spirit in you. And here's what David said. He said, in nature, nature is at work. Character and destiny are her handiwork. She gives us love and hate, jealousy and reverence. All that, all of that, all that is ours is the power to choose which impulse to follow. And my fault, it's all, you know, the high, low, black, white, front of the hand, back of the high. There is always, in, in the world, you shall have tribulation because you're not a robot. You can have happiness, you can have sadness, you can have joy, you can have abundance, you can have poverty. It's all there, but it's all created in the mind. And you're not a robot, so you can create happiness or sadness. If you just ha were being happy all the time, there'd be no balance in life. I just love it. All that is ours is the power to choose which impulse to follow. Now, to bring anything into your life is to imagine that it's already there. To, be, to imagine that it's already there. Like when you do your spiritual mind treatment, it's already there. Like when the grace, great Christ of Jesus said, when you pray, believing that you have already received it, and then you have, you shall receive it, already there, already there. I'm going to close with a true story, and it had such an impact on me, and impact on everybody I know that read about the story, or saw the story on TV or in books or somewhere. There was a young lady, and she was pregnant with the first child, and she loved her dogs. She had three dogs. And she was pregnant with the baby. And she thought, oh, I just, I just don't want to. She was attached to not going to the hospital to have the baby. But in this specific situation, when, when it came to ha have time to have the baby, she needed to go to the hospital. So she was, before she left, she kissed her dogs goodbye and on. Off she went. She was thinking about those dogs 25 or 26 miles away and loved those dogs. And she was so attached to the dogs. And then she thought, you know, I've got to get unattached. I've got to be here in this moment. And I've got to be here for my child strong and powerfully because I know I can affect this child by my emotions. So I want it to be an easy ride out for the child. And she was praying and that she was treating but she could not stop thinking about the dogs. And she said, well, how can I think about the dogs? And then she can think, of, she thought about the littlest one and how she loved that little dog, how cute it was and how beautiful it was and how full of energy. And then she thought about her second dog, second biggest dog, how it would look at her. Have you ever see a dog wonder when they look at you? They go like this, they look at you like, like what's going on, you know? And, then, and so that dog was called Wonderful. 
And so then she had this third dog, and she was thinking about it. And she finally said her prayer, I know my husband will be able to handle the dogs. I know everything's fine. I know my baby's fine. And I know the dogs are fine. And she decided to walk to the window and have a breath of fresh air. And she looked out. And there are the dogs sitting there looking at her. They had walked 26 miles through city streets, over bridges, through traffic, in and out of highways, and they all were there to support her. You know, Shakespeare said, there are more things in heaven and on earth than there are in all of your philosophies. Those dogs had something in them that knew that lady loved her dog so much, and she knew about that dog about the, the dogs and how they loved her. And so she called her husband, and her husband didn't want to answer the phone, because he was looking for the dogs. Called her <laughs> husband, said, hi, honey, how you doing? He said, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna feel terrible when you find this out. You're gonna feel awful. I lost the dogs. I opened the door, and they're gone. I don't know what to do. She said, relax, honey. They walked 26 miles to be with me. They're sitting right outside the hospital room. I'm looking out the window at them and they will not move. And he came and got the dogs. And they allowed her to bring the dog, bring the dogs up into the hospital room to visit her. Life is really crazy wonderful when you are unattached. Anything you are attached to creates rigidity and, and pain in your life. Anything you're attached to. If you're attached to another person, I'm not attached to Sheila. She's not attached to me. We are free to be who we were before we ever got into the relationship. You know, you've heard me say people don't give up relationships, uh, you know, for nothing. They give up to get back to self. They gave up to get into the relationship. So we're totally free to be and grow and blend and flow together. That's life. That's the way life is for you. That's the way life is for me. And that's the way it is. I love each one of you. I want the best for each one of you. I want you to have a real wonderful day. When you think about the happiest times in your life, the happiest times in your life, like when you're in a, with a friend and you finish each other's sentences and all that, when you're with somebody you, you, when you love, when you walk down to the ocean, to the desert, when you're reading a good book, notice you are totally unattached and your thinking is free and flowing. And when your thinking is free and flowing, Everything that is blocked in your life starts to come into your life only more, bigger, better, and more exciting. I'm with you in this, and so it is. Thank you. Thank you.